Hello viewers, uh, welcome back to the course on scientific computing in MATLAB. So today we will going to discuss the another method that is called that how we can find the eigenvalues. Because in the previous lecture we have seen that the eigenvalues play a very important role in the convergence of the iterating method. So now the next question is that how we can find the eigenvalue using the numerical computation. So now from the previous one we found that the iterative method like Gauss Jacobi or Gauss Seidel or other method they are dependent on the eigenvalues. The rate of convergence involves involves spectral radius. So the question comes that how to find the eigenvalues of the matrix. So let's the next topic is how to find. eigenvalues of a square matrix that is A that is n cross n. Because we are involved with solving the system A x is equal to B and then we have to find what is the eigenvalue of this n cross n system. We know that the eigenvalues can be found analytically as a x is equal to lambda x, where x is not equal to 0. Then in that case we say that this lambda is the is a eigenvalue of matrix A and this x is called corresponding eigenvector. Now I want to find first what is the eigenvalue and then the eigenvector. And then we know that how we can find this one. Now, if A is 3 cross 3, then we can find eigenvalues analytically. Analytically means that with the pen of paper, I can find the Cartesian equation and then we can solve this one. Maybe for 4 cross 4 it is quite difficult. And then from A 5 cross 5 and so on, so I can say that it is very hard. Or even impossible. So now to find out this one, we take the help of numerical computation. So to deal uh, to deal with this one, that how to find the eigenvalues of the matrix, there is a method called power method. So power method is a iterative method. So this is a iterative. So now how we can do, do with this one? Suppose I have a matrix A that is n cross n matrix. Now what I do? Because this is a iterative method, so I start with the initial x0. So initial x0 means this is my initial guess. So that is my initial guess x0. Now what I do? I will take a x naught. So I will get a another vector and that another vector I call it maybe y naught, right. So in this case what I do is that this y naught is a vector. So now I reduce this vector into the normalized form. 
normalized vector. So, whatever the vector y naught I am getting, I will call it normalized vector. So, what is the meaning of normalized vector? Suppose I have a matrix like 1, 2, minus 1, 0, suppose this is my matrix and I start with the process 1, 1, then I will get the value, this will multiply and this will add. So, this is 3 and this will be 1 and this will be minus 1. So, now in this case, this is the element with the highest magnitude. So, in this case, what I will do? I will take 3 common from this. So, this will be 1 and this is minus 1 by 3. Now, the highest value, highest component in this vector is 1. So, this vector is called normalized vector. Does not matter the, what is the sign because I we want the highest in terms of numerical value or in the magnitude value. So, that this vector becomes the normalized vector. Okay. So, what do we do that? We make it x naught. So, this x naught, uh, this y naught. So, what I do that in the y naught, I will take this element common and then I will make this x 1 and that I will call it c 1. So, what I am doing here? Now, from this vector, I have taken this element, the highest element common. So, I call it c 1 now and then the remaining vector becomes x 1. So, x 1 is my normalized vector. Okay. So, from here I can say that my x 1 will be 1 over c 1 y naught. So, that is my the normalized vector in this case. Now, from here <coughs> what I do that now I put next step I will put a x 1. So, in this case what will happen I will put the a x 1 from here I will get y 1. Now, with the help of y 1 I will reduce this one into c 2 x 2. So, I will keep doing like that. Then from here I can say that after after k steps because after one step I will get a x node is equal to c 1 x 1. So, from here I will get a x 1 in the after two step I will get a x 1. So, after k step I will get a x k minus 1 that can be written as c k x k. So, from here I can write this one where this is that you have to keep in mind that this is a normalized vector. This is also normalized vector. So, now from here you can see that I am getting this type of algorithm that is C k x k. Now, if you just compare with this a x is equal to lambda x. Now, you can see from here that if as k tends to infinity that after many iterations if x k minus 1 and x k are same, same means they will take that uh, the difference between these L2 norm and that norm is less than the required tolerance is almost same which implies that that the limit k tends to infinity c k will tends to lambda. So, this will tends to lambda and then my x k tends to the corresponding eigenvector. Okay. So, that is the process of the power series method. Now, 
before that one. So, there is one more term we want to define that dominant eigenvalue. So, what is the dominant eigenvalue? Dominant eigenvalue means suppose I have a matrix and cross n matrix and now from, from the linear algebra we know that if I, we have a n cross n matrix then we have a n number of eigenvalues. So, suppose I write lambda 1, lambda 2 up to lambda n, this is the n eigenvalues corresponding to this matrix. These eigenvalues may be complex also, does not matter. Now, if we choose lambda, any lambda ith value, taking the magnitude that is maximum, maximum among all lambda i's, I can call it k among all i's, then this is called the dominant eigenvalue. So, we call it in the terms of magnitude, maximum of all lambda i's in terms of magnitude. Then eigenvector that is x k corresponding to lambda k is called dominant eigenvector. So, that is called the dominant eigenvector. So, now we are ready to apply that the power method. So, this is the power method we are going to define now. Power method. So, assuming that that the matrix a that is n cross n matrix having n distinct eigenvalues. So, that is the condition that we are dealing with n distinct eigenvalue because we know that the eigenvalue may be repeating also. So, that we are not keeping in mind, we are having the n distinct eigenvalues. Now, and we know that if we have a n distinct eigenvalues, then which implies that we have n linearly independent eigenvectors. So, we have now lambda 1, lambda 2 up to lambda n, these are n distinct eigenvalues and I take it v 1, v 2, v n or we can take this as x 1, x 2, x n. So, these are n linearly independent. So, this is L i, I can write as L i eigen vectors. So, these are there. Now, now I know that this is a linearly independent eigen vector. So, let we choose without loss of generality that lambda mean is the highest one. So, I can call it lambda 1 is greater than lambda 2 all lambda n because they are n distinct eigenvalues. So, we could call it. Now, if x naught is chosen appropriately, then the sequence, then the sequence 
x k. So, this is a x k I am writing in terms of a vector because this will be vector definitely. So, this is x 1 k x n k where k is 0, 1, 2 and so on and c k generated recursively as a x k is equal to y k a x k is equal to y k which implies my y k my x k plus 1 will be 1 over c k plus 1 y k where where the c k plus 1 is equal to x j k suppose I take and that x k j is equal to maximum of x i k where i is from 1 to n. I already told you that it should be the maximum value and that maximum value I will take k common that, that is my c k as we have discussed here. So, this is basically my c k and that is the maximum value. Then the sequence will converge will converge to the dominant eigen value that is lambda 1 and eigen vector that is x 1 respectively. So, that is the limit k tends to infinity the x k will converge to x 1 and limit k tends to infinity c k will converge to lambda 1. So, this is my statement of this one. I have already explained that for a given problem how we can implement this power method. So, that is the statement. Now, we can do the proof of this one. So, proof is quite easy. Now, given that x 1, x 2 up to x n are linearly independent are linearly independent vectors. Now, from here I can say that if I choose any vector x naught that can be written as a linear combination. So, I call it a 1 x 1 plus a 2 x 2 up to a n x n. So, I can write this as a linear combination because these are the n vector linearly independent vector. So, any vector which is of dimension n can be written as a linear combination of this one. So, that is my equation number 1. So, where x naught, so x naught is initial guess, initial So, that is initial guess we are going to start with. Now, I apply the matrix. So, pre multiply equation 1 with A, the matrix and cross and matrix, whatever are the matrix I am taken. So, I can write this as A x naught can be written as A A 1 x 1 up to A n x n. So, this matrix I can take inside this common because A 1 is a constant. So, I can write this as a A 1 A x 1 
plus a 2 a x 2 and up to a n a x n. So, this one I can take from here. Now, the x 1 is the Eigen vector corresponding to the Eigen value lambda 1. So, from here I can write that this should be equal to a 1 lambda 1 x 1 plus a 2 lambda 2 x 2 up to a n lambda n x n. So, this one we can write from here. So, from here I can write this one as now this is my a x 2. Now, from here I know that this a x 2 is equal to y 0. Now, I know that in the y 0 I will take the factor c k common. So, I, what, I, what I can write from here? This one I can write as 1 over c 1 into y naught can be written as a 1 lambda 1 x 1 by c 1 and a n lambda n x n by c 1. So, I am dividing the whole thing by c 1. From here this I know that becomes x 1 because we already know that this become x 1. So, from here I can write that x 1 can be written as now I can write this as so from what I am doing now I would just take the common lambda 1 over c 1 from all. Now I will get from inside I will get a 1 x 1 plus a 2 x 2 lambda 2 over lambda 1 I will get this value and so on in the end I will get a n lambda n over lambda 1. So, this one I so c 1 I will just take common and I will take lambda 1 also common from all this. Now, I will get from here. So, this is again I can apply this one. Now, I will again so I can write as a 2 now again apply multiply. So, again multiply pre multiply with respect to a. So, I will get a x 1. So, this is lambda 1 over c 1 is a constant. So, I can take common and from here inside I can write as a directly I can write now a x 1 plus a 2 lambda 2 over lambda 1 a x 2 and so on a n x n is also there. So, it will be a x n into this factor. So, this one will be equal to a n lambda n over lambda 1 a x n. Now, from here I know that this a x 1 is again the lambda 1, this is lambda 2. So, this is lambda 1 x 1, this is lambda 2 x 2, this is lambda n x n. So, from here I can write this as lambda 1 over c 1 and then this is a 1 lambda 1 x 1 plus a 2 lambda 2 over lambda 1 lambda 2 x 2 and a n lambda n over lambda 1. into lambda n x n. Now, again I can take this lambda 1 common and from here I can get a x 1 will be what? That will be y 1 and y 1 I take the common factor. So, this will be equal to c 2 x 2. So, now from here I can write that my 
x2 will be lambda 1 and again lambda 1 I am taking common so square and it will be c1 c2 because this factor is I have taken this as a common uh, this is the, the highest value we are taking to make this vector as a normalized vector and from here I can write this as a again a1 x1 plus a2 lambda 2 over lambda 1 and lambda 2 over lambda 1 again so it will be square and then a n lambda n over lambda 1 square x2 x n and so on. So, if we keep doing after k iterations, so first iteration I will get x1, in the second iteration I will get x2, so after k iteration I will get xk, so it will be lambda 1 power k c1 c2 up to ck and this will be a1 x1 plus a2 lambda 2 or lambda 1 power k x2 and a n lambda n over lambda 1 power k x n. So, this is we are finding. Now, from here, now if k tends to infinity, then let us see what will happen. Then in this case we know that, so all this factor if you see, and then this factor if you see lambda 2 lambda 1, now if you see then this is very less than 1 in magnitude. So, I can take the value this one, similarly lambda n over lambda 1, all this value power k. So, this is also less than 1, right. From here I can see that now if I choose an lambda 1, so this is the condition we have taken that in magnitude its value is 1. It may happen, so let us see what will happen. Suppose I take lambda 1 is equal to minus 8, suppose it is minus 8 and lambda 2 is suppose 4 and lambda 3 is suppose minus 2. Then what will happen? Lambda, so this in magnitude this is the highest value. So, I will take lambda 2 over lambda 1. So, it is 4 over minus 8, this is minus 1 by 2, right. Now, lambda 3 by lambda 1. So, it is minus 2 by minus 8. So, it is 1 by 4. So, that is value less than 1. This is also less than 1 in magnitude. So, this value is the magni in magnitude less than 1 and this value is in magnitude less than 1. Now, what will happen if I take minus 1 by 2 power k? So, in this case, this will be minus 1 power k and then 1 over 2 power k. Now, if I k tends to infinity, then I know that this is going to be 0. So, from here I can say that this factor in magnitude also going to be uh, 0. So, if I put this k tends to infinity, from here I can say that limit k tends to infinity x k and then I put the limit again. I take the limit on both sides. So, this will be lambda 1 power k c 1 c 2 up to c k into a 1 x 1. So, this one I can now remove from here. So, from here I can write that this is a 1 x 1 plus a 2 lambda 2 over lambda 1 power k x 2 and so on. And now we also assumed that this matrices are distinct, this eigenvalue are distinct and real also, but if it is not real then we have to take the magnitude. So, in that case 
we can take the magnitude of this one when the matrix when the eigen values are complex okay now if you see from here then i can write from here that the limit k tends to infinity x k and on the right hand side this tends to 0 all this term tends to 0 so from here i will get this will be equal to a1 x1 this c1 c2 up to ck so i will left with only this limit k tends to infinity i will get only a1 lambda 1 k x1 by c1 c2 up to ck so this factor i will get so this is into x1 now from here also i know that on the left hand side it is also converging to s1 because we know that whenever we will get a x1 is equal to lambda 1 x1 only then the method will converge so this is the same eigen factor eigen vector so from here i can say that this implies that as k tends to infinity this vector limit k tends to infinity a1 lambda 1 power k c1 c2 up to ck x1 should converge to x1 so that implies that limit k tends to infinity a1 lambda 1 k c1 c2 up to ck should be 1 now from here this is my condition now the same i can write from here limit k tends to infinity a1 lambda 1 k minus 1 over c1 c2 up to ck minus 1 that should be always it should be equal to 1 because i am just in place of k i am putting k minus 1 so that is it now i will get 2 so i call it 3 i call it 4 so now i am dividing 3 by 4 will get limit k tends to infinity so i'll get a1 lambda 1 k over c1 c2 up to ck multiplied by a1 lambda 1 k minus 1 and it will go at the numerator c1 into c2 up to c k minus 1 and that should be equal to 1 so this will cancel out this will cancel out with this and this will cancel out with this so from here i will get the limit k tends to infinity lambda 1 over ck that should be equal to 1 and from here i can say that the limit k tends to infinity ck will be lambda 1 so that is my convergence of this one so if my vector is converging to x1 then that x1 is the dominant eigen vector then the eigen value ck will converge to the lambda 1 so that is the proof of this power series theorem so let's stop today here so today we have start with the power series method and to find the dominant eigen values and the dominant eigen vector so i hope you have uh, enjoyed this lecture we'll continue from the from the next lecture so thanks for watching this uh, thanks very much